So, uh, a very good morning, uh, one and all. Uh, welcome you all to a session called Demystifying Ayurveda. So, when I say demystifying Ayurveda, this uh, session is for uh, someone who is uh, not from Ayurvedic fraternity or it is for someone who have not learned Ayurveda. It is for uh, people, yes, layman in general. Uh, and beyond that, people who study science and who are very inquestive of knowing what Ayurveda is. So basically, I'm going to speak about uh, how to get introduced to Ayurveda if you are a science student and if you are interested in knowing Ayurveda more. Uh, myself, being someone uh, from a science background, science background, I, I mean uh, from the modern biology, qualified as a microbiologist, I could get into Ayurveda, I could learn Ayurveda, I could at least understand or, or converse with the uh, people who know good Ayurveda. I will not say that I am an expert in Ayurveda. No, in no way I am an expert in Ayurveda, but I can at least converse with an expert on Ayurveda and at least understand the context in which they speak and what is exactly what they mean. So uh, this session would be to prepare you all to be in that level that you can hold a healthy conversation with an Ayurvedic expert. You can prepare yourself uh, to have a good conversation with an Ayurvedic expert. This is not a professional teaching. This is uh, something which I am telling from my experience. Uh, being from an Ayurvedic family and uh, the background of Kerala probably has helped me. I was, I should say, I was lucky for uh, being from that background that made things a little easier for me but that doesn't mean it is a very difficult task for others who doesn't have that background or who is not from uh, such an uh, back, backup there are many people who have done this and this is for those students uh, who in modern biology and those scholars uh, who are researching on uh, modern biology, especially interested on medicinal plants, because I frequently get calls asking, okay, can this medicine or this herb be studied against this activity? What does Ayurveda say? Uh, so I'll have to give them a short lecture to make them understand Ayurveda doesn't say particularly that this would act as an antibiotic or this would act as an antipyretic. Uh, Ayurvedic concept itself is quite different. You need to understand its basics. You need to understand the body. It is personalized. You cannot blindly say that this herb would do this in every person's body. So this used to be a regular activity. At least I get two calls every week. And uh, I thought it was very good uh, for such people who are in quest team to give them a small guideline on how do you start understanding these concepts and how do you learn it? What are the sources for that? And how can you know a little of Ayurveda? So in fact, uh, uh, I would love to speak without a presentation, but a presentation can help to make me grounded to the subject and. Uh, uh, that would also be helpful for the viewers. Uh, so I have uh, a presentation which I would uh, share now. So uh, I hope the presentation is there. So what I'm speaking once again is uh, demystifying Ayurveda, a journey for non-Ayurveda kind scholars. So with all due respects to all the gurus and all the teachers who have taught me this, who have made me capable of at least speaking at this level, I first uh, thank everyone for that. And then let me start. Uh, First, I would be actually telling about what is the limitations. Uh, sorry for starting with a negative slide, but let me 
put it in a better way by saying uh, what are the limitations which a science scholar will have to overcome before attempting to learn Ayurveda. So what is it? One is definitely though we 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 in the sense when I say the scholar who is trying to study could be a degree holder, could be a bachelor degree holder, or even a master degree holder, or even uh, who have completed the higher secondary and could have very sound science uh, background from the schooling. Even then, at that time, there would be a lack of a foundational knowledge in Ayurveda. That is because our current educational system at no stage in the education gives a concrete uh, idea of, about what are Indian sciences and what are the specific peculiarities or the thought process of Indian sciences. So for everyone who is into Ayurveda from the formal educational background, they would definitely lack a foundational knowledge. And it is important to build this foundational knowledge. In the due course of the presentation, I would say, how do we do it? But you should understand that you should not think that Ayurveda is an easy cakewalk because you have a degree or you have had been excelling in science in your formal education. No, even if you are that good, uh, you would still need foundational basis of Ayurveda to understand. So that is what I would like to first uh, say. And then the next limitation is the cultural context. Yes, uh, um, we are all here Indians also from the science background. When I say science background, I mean the modern science. In no way I mean that Ayurveda is not science. Ayurveda is also a science. When I say science, that means the modern biology background. Even the students of the modern biology background within India, even they are actually uh, lacking that connect with the culture of the uh, way how our educational systems existed uh, before or when actually Ayurveda was being uh, codified as a, a knowledge system. The cultural context, you should pause yourself from what you are now and what are the surroundings you are and you should learn it from a cultural context how it was a lot of years before. That mind resetting is required to understand the Ayurvedic texts, our thought process. That doesn't mean that these thought processes are outdated, but the way it is written, to understand the way it is written, you should definitely come into that cultural context and reset yourself. This is what I have, I have to say as a second uh, point. Then you should always think that there is a potential for misinterpretation. Since you are not from the background, and you can always uh, think outside of what is written and there is always a probability of misinterpretation. So what I mean to say now is that what you have understood, never think that that is what is the correct thing. You should always keep a sense of doubt within yourself that whether what you have understood is the right interpretation, uh, which actually the authors of the text or the knowledge actually mean. Uh, so you should always have that sense that you could misinterpret what has been uh, thought or what has been read, that factor you should always caution and keep in your mind. Then the other aspect is, of course, uh, you have a very limited access to practical training and even application. Uh, when you say Ayurveda, it is not just a health science. Of course, predominantly, it is now surviving as a health science, as a system of medicine. But Ayurveda otherwise is not just a system of medicine. It's a study of biology. That is what Ayurveda is. When you look into the knowledge perspective of what Ayurveda can actually give. So these four points, as I say, you have to keep in mind the lack of foundational knowledge which you have, the cultural context in which how it has been uh, put into in the text, then the potential that you could misinterpret unless and until you are have become an expert. And then you have limitations of the practical training and the application. Even when you learn, you are not supposed to treat a patient or you are not supposed to actually apply what is there unless and until you are qualified enough medically 
uh, you have a qualification and you have a you are a registered medical practitioner you are not supposed to do anything in that on a patient you should understand all those four points and then you should start learning ayurveda so yes the first thing which comes into everyone's mind is the language uh Sanskrit is the language in which Ayurveda is written or most of the authentic textbooks of Ayurveda is in Sanskrit. And I would say Sanskrit is the best language to learn Ayurveda. Yes, it is. But that doesn't mean if you don't know Sanskrit, uh, you are absolutely out of uh, understanding the scope of uh, there are a lot of very, very good Ayurvedic Vaidyas even who have not strong foundational base on Sanskrit, who is doing or excelling uh, their, in their medical treatment very well. But the first choice is if you can learn Sanskrit, yes, learn Sanskrit and then get into Ayurveda. And uh, contextually, uh, uh, there are many languages in India which is very close to Sanskrit. So if you belong to that ethnic group of those languages, then you are again uh, blessed uh, it could be a little easier task for you to uh, get uh, or get into the understanding of what is the written in the Ayurvedic texts. So let me tell you, Sanskrit is the best language, but that doesn't mean that you have to be an expert in Sanskrit to learn Ayurveda. Uh, you can still overcome this hurdle of the language. Then the next one is uh, when a science person comes into learning of Ayurveda and if you switch on to understand or if you look into books or even uh, referring to the uh, a lot of uh, content which is available online now, there is this paradox of mythology which you will have to really overcome. There is a lot of mythology when you learn history of Ayurveda. When you learn any subject, definitely learning its history is very important. Without learning its history, you will not be able to actually understand. And when you check any text available, whether it is print or whether it is online or whether it is the vlogs or whatever source which you are going to, uh, the first factor which comes to you is origin of Ayurveda. If you try to find origin of Ayurveda, people keep uh, telling Lord Brahma was the first person to recite Ayurveda and Lord Brahma conveyed this to Daksha Prachapati. This is something which you will, you will actually uh, get from wherever you refer. And this is uh, the paradox of mythology that you will have to overcome and try to understand. And this is why exactly I said the cultural context, which is very important. And uh, how the educational methodologies that existed at that time was uh, in a way that the spiritual learning and the learning of knowledge was not differentiated in the earlier culture. Uh, the gurukulas or the learning centers of the ancient times were spiritual centers and the spiritual centers uh, imparted knowledge connecting with mythology. It was easier to convey a mythology to a student and make him understand what the importance of the subject is than putting him uh, before him the theories. And that is exactly what you will have to understand when you say the paradox of mythology. Just to take an example, I'll say uh, this concept of Brahma. There's a beautiful, I'll, I'll explain this book. I'm, I'm referring to a book. Uh, it's called as a History of Ayurveda. It is from the, uh, it is published from Aryabhaidu Shala Kotikal from the publication department of it by N.V. Krishna Guti Varya. Uh, there is a beautiful book of this in Malayalam. In fact, I have actually read the Malayalam book of it. Uh, I have felt a much better connect while reading that because the uh, author himself is uh, his mother tongue is Malayalam. So the book is very good. If, if you are, if you know Malayalam, it is good to read the Malayalam version of the book. But uh, if you don't know Malayalam, then definitely the English book is also well, very well, good and fine. Uh, so here uh, he has uh, explained the concept of Brahma. Uh, I'll, I'll read out so that I'll not miss anything or misinterpret anything. Lord Brahma has four faces each one for reciting a particular uh, Veda. The con this concept arose from the sacrifices. 
Some scholars believe that Brahma symbolized the community life of a prehistoric society. On the discovery of fire, the caveman and woman sit huddling to, together around the fire, producing, refining, and preserving were achieved through power of fire. The life was formed through the flames. All invocations were addressed to fire, and yetna used to happen. And what the text says is, you can actually read it from the text. What the text says is, Brahma is a group of conglomeration who used to come into a context and discuss particular important aspects and they come into conclusions and they came into and this is this is exactly what is converted when you say the mythology of brahma recited so what it means is this knowledge came from nowhere that means it already existed that means the natural laws it actually exists and it was reproduced by this group of learning scholars, which was addressed as Brahma. This is what I would like to interpret it as. And this paradox of mythology, a science student should definitely try to interpret in these ways and understand it from that perspective, the perspective in which the culture was the set at that time and how learning and uh, the educational background was set in that time. Of course, these things may not matter at all in this age, but when you are learning, you should, as I said, preset yourself and condition yourself to the differences of how it was and uh, the good way of all the aspects, the good aspects of all that educational system should be imbibed and you should try to imbibe the knowledge out of it rather than becoming uh, um, critical about uh, what is what was lacking in that this is my my takeaway point for you and uh, next aspect is uh, learning terminologies before you learn or before you start uh, making a serious learning of a particular text i would advise you to understand the terminologies first try to understand the terminologies which is used when you say prakriti when you say vikriti or when you say tridosha or when you say dosha or when you say panja mahabuda what does exactly these terms actually mean these aspects have to be first understood you can do your thorough reading then you can discuss with people whom you know about uh, whom i people who know ayurveda can discuss this terminologies even if you don't understand it completely but you should definitely attempt to understand uh, the context of these terminologies and uh, then start your learning process so i would advise you to get introduced to the terminologies in ayurveda so that you can at least uh, um, get into that track of the thought process otherwise it is going to be very very difficult uh, you cannot start learning a textbook just like that by reading it because without knowing these terminologies, probably you will end up bugged knowing nothing out of uh, the reading which you make. This is exactly what I will say. Reading. You should have wide reading. Do not depend on a single source to learn Ayurveda. There are multiple uh, sources of reading. When I say that... Uh, uh, this is all for uh, non-science, uh, I mean, the non-Ayurvedic scholars and uh, those who do not know Sanskrit. If you know Sanskrit well and good, you can go directly go to the the text, the actual textbooks. Uh, but if you are learning it from other languages, please do not stick on to one text. Read a lot of texts of the same context, of the same uh, uh thought processes, everything you learn from multiple texts and then try to evolve your own thinking on what actually is written in these books. And when I say remember, translations are always a problem. Translations are always a problem. There's a lot of limitations for the translations. You just do not think that if you take an English book on Ayurveda, you can learn it easily. Most of the books available in English are loose translations of Sanskrit. Uh, one of course, from that cultural perspective, uh, it is uh, most of the books are written by non-native English uh, speakers, and the style of their writing is from their understanding, and the style of writing itself is not of a uh, very good standard. Plus, the limitation of the English language that most of the Sanskrit 
terms which when i say most of the terms i mean most of the technical terms in sanskrit is not that easily translatable uh, so that problem is there there's always the problem i i used to always say the problem of vada being translated as air uh, people who read air uh, pitta when they read it as uh, fire and then uh, kapha they read it as uh, uh, flam or uh, we all get confused and uh, sometimes you end up saying you know, what stupid is this the air fire and the flame doing in the body and this is exactly why you should actually go and make make yourself familiarize with the terminologies and then when they they put the translations in the bracket as air you should all understand it's not air it's beyond that of course i cannot explain you what is vata pitta and kapha in a short presentation like this of course that is not the way i would recommend you to learn ayurveda also but when you are actually learning it please do understand that the translations have a lot of limitations so you should understand it from a larger perspective try to learn more about it before you come into a conclusion uh, of anything and let me say most most of the i will not say all but most of the resources available in the web are not trustworthy um, i mean about ayurveda what is available in the web are not trustworthy many of them are blogs and blog entries or sales promotional materials which is available on, uh, on the net of course there are very few but i cannot uh, really distinguish uh, there are no distinguishing characters which i can say from my experience and my reading i would rec recommend the books of professor ms valyata and dr vasant lad dr david froli and dr robert suboda or uh, the last two being a uh, non natives of the language they have tried to interpret it from a different perspective and their their writing style is also from a perspective of a non uh, native and uh, for a science learner it is easier to understand that dr vasant lad is a bridge between both and professor ms valyathan i had been a fan of him because of his writing his attempts of writings uh, perhaps are the closest one to the uh, what called uh, classical texts actually uh, say so after terminologies then vast reading is what you need uh, when you have to learn ayurveda then discourse after you have read or after you have understood the concept it is very very important that you should have a discourse or a discussion and this is where the guru the concept of guru becomes important and uh, it is important to discuss with somebody who is authentic in that area identifying the guru is important that itself is a total top, a different topic you have to identify the right guru who is able to convey the things without misinterpreting or having any loose uh, uh, translations or loose uh, um, imbibing of knowledge uh, the guru you have to find uh, you have to discuss with the guru asking the questions with guru what you have understood you discuss or you say this is what i understand am i right then the guru will give an vast perspective of that uh you will have to have a guru it is not easy uh, of course you can learn online you can read uh, yes but at the end before you become an authentic source for what you have learned you should definitely get in touch with a guru and try to learn and i am very very much thankful to my gurus especially uh dr ram manohar sir and uh, uh, dr indulal sir these were the people whom with i used to uh discuss and every my colleague in avp research foundation basically uh, whenever i am stuck about some concept or some some point which uh, i have heard in ayurveda i keep going them i debate with them when they come up with uh, their uh, explanation of that i keep questioning and this this have helped me a lot to understand the various perspective and being an avp was a big blessing because avp is a place a pilgrimage place for people who want to learn ayurveda here experts keep coming and going and there is many of i cannot name a single one i cannot point out any single people out of it because most of all the experts keep coming and going this campus and that has become a real blessing for me to understand ayurveda a lot better 
Ayurveda from its scientific point of view, Ayurveda from its philosophical point of view, Ayurveda from its historical point of view, Ayurveda from its point of mythology, all those aspects I have been able to uh, get connected with. And that is what I say, you should definitely have this connect. And you should have a guru who know Ayurveda and selection of guru is important. If you go wrong in selecting your guru, uh, you may end up uh, knowing something which is not Ayurveda. Then I would say next, the peer group, which I have already said, uh, the peer group engage with like-minded individuals, engage with Ayurvedic practitioners, join communities, keep talking uh, and uh, to them. When I, when I say keep talking to them, I'm, I don't mean to lecture at them. What I mean is to interact with them, keep listening a lot of what they speak. And uh, even if you're lucky enough, uh, to see some clinical consultations and uh, try to engage with that clinical consultation. But that doesn't mean that you should treat the patient. No, that is not uh, what it is. Try to go through the uh, prescriptions and uh, try to understand, okay, why this prescription for this disease condition and why the same disease condition to another individual, the prescription was different. Ask these kind of questions to the practitioners and try to Try to understand that it is, you cannot learn Ayurveda without being with people who practice Ayurveda. This is a very important point. Um, uh, do connect with Ayurveda. When I say if you are doing any research project or any research in Ayurveda, make sure an Ayurvedic person is involved in the group. Otherwise, you end up doing something else which you believe is Ayurveda, which actually may not be Ayurveda. And this is a very important point for researchers also who's working on medicinal plants. If your perspective is from Ayurveda, you should make sure that one Ayurvedic person is associated in your project. Then uh, getting through understanding classical books. Yes, if you have the confidence that you've come at a level that you can learn classical books, yes, you can attempt to that. But before really reading the classical books, I would recommend, this is absolutely not an advertisement. And I don't think Professor Amos Valiath answer uh, need any advertisement. I would say you should definitely read Legacy of Charaka, Legacy of Chushtuda, and Legacy of Vakbada. Out of all the three, legacy of Vakbada is something which has inspired more, maybe because I belong to that Vakbada tradition and I had been associated with people of more of that Vakbada tradition. And that may be one reason, but uh, I would recommend if you personally ask the uh, legacy of Vakbada is something, uh, the bare minimum which you will have to definitely uh, learn. In fact, it is just next to me, the book is here, uh, the legacy of Vakbada. And this is structured exactly the way how uh, uh, actually you will have to, uh, when you look into Ashtanga Hridayam, the structure of Ashtanga Hridayam is maintained in the legacy of Vagbada book. This is not a word-to-word -word translation of Ashtanga Hridayam. It is an, uh, uh, I'll say, uh, translational work uh, uh, wherein what Valyatan sir understood from Ashtanga Hridayam, he has tried to put it in the way uh, a modern person uh, can understand. And when I say uh, M.S. Valyatan, you so, should understand that he's from a perspective. He he was a uh, physician. Uh, who, he was a cardiac surgeon, basically, who invented a uh, heart valve and uh, who had a thorough knowledge of uh, the modern uh, medicine and uh, the system. One thing which uh, being from the background of his family, knowing Sanskrit from childhood, it was easier for him to learn under the gurus and uh, he actually learned under the guru and then he wrote this book. This is a very good, uh, if you are stuck, uh, if you have read many books and still if you are stuck, this would be a very good key for you to unlock Ayurveda. Then next, you can definitely go into learning Brihatrayi. I would advise to select one out of your choice. And with that, go and sit with the guru and learn. There, there are not many options for this. Yes, but there are a few options which you can explore and find. Uh, uh, you can, uh, you, are, you should definitely, if you're very serious about the learning of Ayurveda, you can then move into learning into the brihatari. Of course, AVP Research Foundation had been conducting a lot of short courses like uh, on Sutrasthana, on Chigilsa, 
on uh, uh, kalpa and other aspects as ayu sutra ayu kalpa and ayu chigilsa programs you are free to attend that such programs also not just an avp research foundation the other places wherever they allow a non ayurvedic science scholars to also to join the courses yes that is also one way and when i said that uh, um if you are serious again about the formal learning of ayurveda you can get into short courses there are short courses and there are formal degrees also there are institutions uh, even in india and abroad which gives there is msc uh, biological sciences with ayurveda biology specialization now being given by transdisciplinary university in bangalore and there are a lot of uh, learning programs the like, uh, sri krishna college of arts and science in coimbatore they give an uh, optional subject called as ayurveda biology and uh, there are short courses being run by many institutions in ayurveda biology even avp research foundation is also offering a certificate program on ayurveda biology uh, if you are interested you can contact us uh, contact uh, us in office at avp research or oaz you can also contact me i'll show my contacts at the end of the presentation and even if uh, you are inspired and if you are still serious about taking it as a profession you can definitely go for bms there are mbbs doctors who have done bms after their uh, ba uh, mbbs curriculum and of course the science scholars and you will have to definitely appear for the neat exam to get qualified to bms there are educational institutions which is offering bms and in the new future i hope uh, foreign universities would also start offering these courses i i understand there is uh, the um scu uh, university from california which is looking seriously to start a formal degree on bms and the university of latvia was also in discussions a lot uh, to start a dual degree programs where you can qualify as an ayurvedic physician and then a modern physician based on your optional subjects you take in your last two years of your seven year uh, medical degree of uh, the eu european union uh, uh, all these things would be in force very soon so those will be an opportunities for people uh, uh, who are from the science background who are very serious about learning ayurveda so that's it that is what and uh, if you are serious about learning ayurveda you can personally get in touch with me uh, we can also uh, in avp research foundation arrange short courses introductory programs and other things especially for those researchers who are involved into medicinal plant research and uh, trying to get their leads from ayurveda the i would advise them to learn ayurveda before jumping into conclusions or taking up your leads from it so that's it uh, thank you uh thank you from uh on behalf of avp research foundation i thank uh, uh devida sir and uh, our director uh, somit kumar sir for this opportunity you can uh, definitely reach out uh, to avp research foundation uh, to know more about and uh, if you're serious about it we can also organize a short course programs on request basis so thank you